Hello everyone, good to see you. Uh, I hope you're all doing very well. Um, do say hello in the comments so we can see who is here. Um, I had a last minute, uh, <laughs> last minute attack of the panics there because my PowerPoint stopped working. But it's all back and working now. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, hello Miss Brennan, nice to see you. Bonjour Monsieur Chalmers, j'espère que tout va bien, bonjour tout le monde. It is lovely to see you all. This is the week you'd be in Paris. I know, I was looking back at some of the pictures that we had of the Sacre Coeur from last time we were there. It was lovely, wasn't it? We had the weather as well. Hello, Kira. It's lovely to see you all. Let's see who we've actually got uh, in today. Usually good numbers. So let's have a look and see who we've got. We've got Erin. Hello, Erin. We've got Emily. Hi, Aditya. How are you? Daisy. Hello. Lizette. Nice to see you. Gabe. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, Miss Brennan. Hello, Mr. Chalmers. Yes, we are missing Paris. We've got Kira, Mr. Ledbitter, hello, nice to see you. We've got Ria, and um, uh, yes, it was good fun, the Paris trip last year. It was certainly uh, it was certainly very interesting. And uh, we did some very interesting wandering around. Um, we saw some auto routes on one particular evening, I seem to remember. Uh, Mr. Chalmers, that was, uh, that was great fun. So, macro, um, parking coaches, that was uh, a bit of a feature. Um, we had a coach driver who was great apart from parking, which uh, perhaps wasn't uh, wasn't his strongest suit. Anyway, let's move on and have a look at what we're doing today. Let's start, first of all, as ever, with our language fact. Oh, which has vanished. This is part of the problem that I was telling you about. Well, I can tell you my language fact today was looking at uh, the word. Uh, we looked at aperture last week and this week we looked at chromatic aberration. So if you imagine on this slide, it says chromatic aberration, which is when your colours don't look quite right on your picture and it's when the colours are focused at the wrong point. Thankfully, the rest of it, I hope, is there. Anyway, so your brilliant photos, as ever, we'll look at to start with. And then we're going to look at masterpiece and look at a famous, uh, a famous photographer. From there, we'll do our lightning quiz and we're going to look at macro this week. I am planning on doing a demonstration, so there's plenty of room for things to go wrong Blue Peter style, but we'll see how that how that pans out. And hopefully I'm going to show you um, a feature of your iPhones that you wouldn't have seen before. Yes, parking coaches. Do you remember that? It was it was a struggle, wasn't it? In fact, it was really handy that Mr. Chalmers was there because unlike the coach driver, Mr. Chalmers knew where we were going, which was really handy. Uh, and in fact, Mr. Chalmers wasn't only uh, the man who took us everywhere, but also acted as a kind of counsellor to the driver who was struggling with all sorts of fundamental things such as driving. So we'll uh, announce the competition winner. Um, I think the competition winner probably knows who she is. I won't give too much away. Uh, we'll try the demo and then we'll set the assignment for next week and see if you can use the skills that we've covered today in order to uh, complete the assignment. So uh, staying on the languages theme, uh, we've got Lizette and I'm guessing this is Spanish. It's not my language, but this is Mi Guitarra uh, with Lizette. And I love the way that you have chosen a really unusual angle at which to photograph this guitar. I think it works really, really well. If you remember last week, we looked at aspect ratio and we talked about trying to make things square, trying the 16-9 ratio, or just trying to go vertical if normally you go horizontal. So that's going portrait rather than landscape. And a lot of you had a really good go at that. So I thought that was incredibly impressive. Um, I love this from Erin and I agree. It is like candy floss, uh, or they are like candy floss. I love the colours. I love the branch that you have got wiggling its way across the uh, image there. I think that's very effective. It looks a bit like lightning if I'm gonna think. I think it's a great shot. What a great shot that is. Oh, talking of great shots, this was a spot of luck. I took out, um, you did, it was, just before, it was just before last week's video. That is true, because I can be looking at this, Lizette, and thinking, Oh, why didn't I include that? And it came in just after uh, just after we did the the presentation last time. So this is uh, a fox spot of luck. I had a new camera. I happened to be taking the dogs for a walk. And this, I don't know whether it's a, a, a male or female fox, but it was sat there and the people across the road uh, feed it. So he or she was sat there just waiting for uh, waiting for his or her food. And if you can imagine, the road is maybe four feet away from there. So it's just off the pavement. And there were cars driving past, people walking by, just wasn't bothered at all. Um, so uh, yeah, the fox, what a good looking fox that one is, gorgeous. Um, so always, always room for pussycats. And I think Miss Brennan, I'm, Miss Brennan only picked up Jack relatively recently. Um, and I know Jack is actually a grand old age. How old's Jack, Miss Brennan? I can't quite remember, but he's not a, 
not a young cat but Miss Brennan's had the uh, had Jack for a while and there he is he's uh, a day in the life of Jack and I take it that Jack's actually not doing a great deal at all oh my word we have more information on Jack which we should jump into uh, Jack so the the information you need is Jack is 17 Jack is deaf Jack has no teeth I can confirm though Jack is a cat so so that much we do know uh, but Jack is a, a great cat and there he is uh, we have this living life on the edge uh, great shot from Adam let us know where this was taken Adam it's a uh, it's a great it's a great great shot now I know that you are a big uh, cat fan Mr Chalmers so just to uh, just to please you let's have uh, our little cat sat there on the screen who can watch this going on as well so we've got Adam here what a great shot this is and we're talking about ratios aren't we 16 nine. I think this is stretched even more this is a really truly um, a, a, panor a panoramic image what a great shot that is Do we still have music playing? Hmm. Let's go back to my slideshow. Can anyone hear me now? Let's see, has that made it any better? Can anyone hear me now? No. Hmm. Let me see why this is happening. Is that any better? It stopped. Is that right, Lizette? Can you all hear me now? Yes, no, yes, it's it's looking good. Yes, all good. Okay, sorry, I don't know what happened there. I may have randomly pressed a button. I've got all these exciting buttons to press. I get a bit excited sometimes, so good, we're back. So Katie, the question is, does, uh, doesn't does everyone take their cat for a walk? Uh, no, I haven't got a cat, so I can't, but uh, that's a very impressive cat that you have there. I love this, Erin. Um, this is a little model of a camera or it's, I don't know, it's a metal camera, isn't it? It looks very, very good. You've gone for the square proportions there, the one-to-one, -one, which I think looks absolutely cracking. I was encouraging you to have a play around with those because we tend to feel constrained by the ratios that we're given when we when we use the camera normally. So it's, it's good to think about different ratios and different ways that you can present your image and not to be, not to be bound or held back by the ratios that you're given by the camera itself. Uh, Sam, Samantha, I love this. I think this is a really well thought out image. I love the fact that you've got the uh, the record just off centre. Um, I love the fact that you've thought about what's in the background so there's no clutter. The shades are beautiful. I think it just works really well. That's the sort of thing that wouldn't be out of place in a catalogue. I think it's a cracking image. So well done for that one. Um, I love this Rachel the woodland staircase I think that's really interesting a wooden staircase going down into wood I love the perspective I love the lines lots of horizontals and verticals what a great shot that is um, and we've we've seen Minty before who I think I accused of being male last time so I clearly got that one wrong but uh, hello Minty and uh, she is cute really she was looking quite uh, quite mean last time around I think but uh, Minty uh, Minty has many moods I love this one from Sam and in fact I've made this slightly too small you can't maybe quite make out in the in the in the far extremes of this there is a seagull and living in Brighton and also living in Crawley as well uh, we know that seagulls are far from quiet and far from shy and retiring and I what I think you've done really well here Sam is by putting uh, yourself lower down than the seagull you have somehow made the seagull dominant in this image even though 
the seagull quite a distance away. So I think that's a really uh, cracking shot. Uh, Aditya, on a road trip to Brighton, we talked about motion blur before, which I think is achieved really well in this image. Uh, nice vista, beautiful sky, lots of green, and we get that sense of motion. So well done. That was uh, someone else who stuck to a previous brief. Well, oh, that one didn't come through, so let's try this one. If, by the way, it is your image that I've missed out this week, I'll put it on next week. I've been rather let down by IT this week, but never mind. Um, so this is Ria. I love this. Uh, and interestingly enough, you've got a bit of lens flare there. I assume, are you looking up through, is it? Well, maybe it's just a roof we can see there, but I, I think that triangle that's cut off there works quite well. Bit of lens flare, lovely colors, lovely bit of puffy cloud. That is very nice indeed. Erin, I like this. You went to the Tate and you've managed to capture um, this reminds me, do you remember Harry Potter where they've got those um, declarations, that horrible woman who comes to take over Hogwarts uh, nails up many, many, many feet high. And this kind of reminds me of that. They're all the same size and they, they're all symmetrically placed. In Harry Potter, they're on a very high wobbly step ladder. Do you remember that? So I think it's a great shot. I love the jaunty angle you've gone for, which shows those lines converging or coming together in the distance. I think that's a really lovely shot, Erin. Mr. Ledbitter outdid himself last week. If you remember the motion blur shot we had the week before, this one is wonderful. Uh, f the tadpoles are history. So the tadpoles have moved to frogs. And what a tiny frog it is. I wonder how long the frog stayed on your hand for. That was a great shot. And the fact you've captured it so sharply. Um, yes, the Tate's a great place, isn't it? We do all love the Tate. I'd love to get out there and do some of that uh, as soon as possible. So... We have Sharjeev. Sharjeev uh, produced a couple of amazing images this time round. A beautiful sunset. What wonderful colours. And I dare say you've uh, turned up the colour quite a bit, but it works. I think that's absolutely wonderful. And uh, just just a really, really beautiful uh, sunset there. This one too. Um, again, it's amazing how quickly the colours... Let's just jump back to this one. How quickly the colours change at that time in the evening. What a fantastic shot. So let's go on to another blank slide. Oh, here we go. This is Gabe. I think this is a, a, a <laughs> it is a very stretchy cat, Gabe, to be fair. And again, you had a, you had a, you mucked around with the aspect ratio. You've stretched that out beautifully. I think, uh, what is the cat's name, please, Gabe, in the comments? That's a very stretchy cat indeed. So we come to the next part of this, which is Masterpiece. Masterpiece. And I have to subject you to my jingle that I wrote. I was very proud of that. Uh, it is really time to go back to school when you start writing jingles. So uh, we looked at uh, next week, Elliot Erwitt. This week, Eve Arnold. So this is Eve Arnold here. She almost made, uh, made it to 100 years old. Um, and she was born in 1912, died in 2012, just short of a year. Um, middle of nine children to uh, immigrant Russian Jewish parents, which was quite interesting given that she did quite a number of political um, photographic assignments over her career where she was bullied because, uh, because she was Jewish. Um, photojournalist, first female member of Magnum Photos. And if you remember last week, we talked about Henri Cartier-Bresson who was the founder or one of the co-founders of, uh, of uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because Gabe has said that, uh, that the cat's actually a bear. Yes, we, we, we have a, a dog who's actually part bear and part Shetland cow. Uh, so she's best known for her humanitarian and her candid photos. And we'll have a look at some of her pictures in a minute. Um, she was the first female member of Magnum. And as I was saying, it's Henri Cartier-Bresson who started Magnum, um, along with others in the 40s. Her photos of Marilyn Monroe are probably what she's best known for, but I'll show you an image she took of Malcolm X, which probably most of you will go, oh, that's the image that I've seen of Malcolm X. Um, she preferred using black and white over colour. Um, many photographers were unimpressed with colour when it came out. They felt that it took no skill to shoot a photo in colour, whereas the skill required to shoot in black and white and then to manipulate the image in black and white in the darkroom was actually quite demanding. And she covered lots of key political events and she was usually the underdog that she liked to capture. So these are two of the images that she captured of Marilyn. Now, putting aside for one minute the, uh, the fact, obviously, Marilyn at, at the time was a massive star, probably the biggest star of her era. Um, 
but it's the way that that if you're taking images of people your chief job is actually to try to make your subject feel at ease and to make them feel comfortable and try to capture a part of them that perhaps they don't give away to many other photographers. Marilyn was, was the most photographed woman of this era and yet when you look at Eve Arnold's photos of Marilyn you could see that Marilyn trusted her, that she was actually relaxed in her company um, and it, they stand out from the other images that you see of Marilyn Monroe. And this is probably another image that you've seen. This is the one taken um, of Malcolm X. And somehow this is the image that came to uh, define him. And it's the image that most appears in textbooks. It's the image that's most used on the news. And there's somehow the way that she's captured that ring along with him and that he he is we're, we're watching him watching someone else at a rally. And um, yeah, that became a really iconic, uh, iconic image of Malcolm X. OK, we have reached quiz time yet again. Another jingle. I hope you enjoyed the rubber duck squeaking at the end. Right. So I'm going to try and um, ask the question. Uh, answer Now, you did you did very well in the first week or two on these quizzes. If I'm going to be totally honest, the, the, the quality of the answers dropped off significantly after that. So I'm hoping I'm going to put the question on the screen and then we'll look in the, uh, I'll read it out to you and we'll see what we get. Question number one, what does focus mean in Latin? What does focus mean in Latin? And let's have answers on uh, the, the comments, please. So what does focus mean in Latin? And uh, don't worry, Mr. Lepeter and Charles, you can jump in here as well, because I'm not entirely sure. Quality, it's, uh, it's good, but... <coughs> no. Very, very impressive, Gabe. So, uh, Miss Brennan, sorry, can I ask you to keep a note of the uh, of the scores? Uh, <laughs> no, I know it's 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 easy when you've got the answers, like uh, like everything else. So, indeed, it does mean uh, hearth or fireplace in Latin. Let's show you the answer: hearth or fireplace, and that we believe is how it came to mean the centre of things, the focus of things. That it's the because the hearth or fireplace was the focus of the household back in the day when people had open fires. All right, so uh, next question. Who is this from last week? Uh, so answers in the comments, please. Who was that? Ooh, it's a good guess, Adam, but I'm afraid it's not him. Ansel Adams came slightly later. It is, we have. We have the right answer from Katie, who said Henri Cartier-Bresson. It is Henri Cartier-Bresson. Um, I absolutely love his pictures. He's probably my favourite, along with Ansel Adams. I think he's a great photographer. His photos of Paris are absolutely sensational. So that was Henri Cartier-Bresson. So let's go on to the next one without any further ado. And the question is, who shot this image? I'm expecting Adam to get to this fairly quickly. Who shot this image? <laughs> I, I shouldn't have said that because unfortunately I gave it away to Gabe who jumped in before you Adam. It was indeed Ansel Adams who shot that image. He was the guy who carried that huge medium format camera. Oh, and that was the right answer there. He's the guy who carried this huge format camera up, uh, up various uh, places in America such as Yosemite. And that's what he did. Right, here we go. Uh, next one. We described light as having, as having colour, direction and... Colour, direction, and what? Answers in the comments, please. <laughs> Adam's devastated by that. Colour, direction, whoa, look at that. We've got Gabe, who is the uh, is the undisputed fastest finger. Have to take him if you ever do a, a quiz. And in fact, that is the right answer. So let's jump back to this. We described light as having colour, direction, and 
quality is the answer. So I've quizzed you on all of those so far, colour, direction and quality. And when we talked about quality, it was whether the light was harsh or whether the, the light was soft, diffused. Um, and the light would be diffused by things like a softbox uh, if you're doing it inside or by clouds outside. So let's jump on now to the next section, which is technique. technique. I won't make any more jingles, I promise you. Right, technique, macro. Macro photography is about photographing small things. You can see that bug, which is just by my head there, about to eat me. That's an example of macro photography. And you've seen these amazing pictures. In fact, let alone you've seen them, we saw that Rachel took some amazing, uh, very nearly macro photographs of the fly last week. And we had Mr. Leadbitter who took the frog. Um, so we're gonna try to do a bit of macro photography and I'm gonna talk you through a bit, of, a bit of technology, a bit of science about it, and then give you some hints and tips and then we'll set up the, uh, the challenge for this week, which is trying to use these hints and tips to take some decent macro photographs. It's not easy doing it with a phone. And in fact, I'll go further and say it's not easy doing it full stop because when you get very close to the image, suddenly you throw shadows over things and it becomes quite challenging and getting, and getting the key element in focus is really quite difficult. So let's just do a little bit of science first. So we talk about um, when, you, when you actually buy a lens for a professional camera, part of the specification of that lens is the focusing distance. And it means the distance from the end of the lens to what you're actually photographing. And the shorter that focusing distance, the, source, the, the shorter the distance between the end of the lens and your subject, the greater the magnification, the bigger your subject will appear. You've also got another specification of lenses, which is focal length. Now, I don't want to go into massive amounts of detail, but focal length with a zoom lens will depend upon how zoomed in you are. So for example, a telephoto lens might have an 80 to 200 millimeter zoom. And at 200 millimeters, you're bringing what's far away closer towards you by zooming in. And at 80, you're keeping it further away. In terms of professional lenses, you've got two types two main types. One is a zoom lens where you've got different focal lengths and you can change it according to your needs. And the other type of lens is a fixed lens where it's got a fixed focal length, like a 50 mil lens or an 80 mil lens. Their specialist lenses tend to be used by uh, portrait photographers because the quality of the glass, so they're quite expensive lenses and they're fixed to a certain, um, a certain focal length. So when we talk about a macro lens, we, we are referring to a lens that's got a magnification ratio of one to one. In other words, you're photograph photographing things at life size or larger. Now, one of the issues that I don't want to go into in a great deal of detail today, one of the issues that you have when you're, when you're taking macro photographs and you're getting up close is the depth of field narrows. In other words, the amount of your image that's in sharp focus is actually relatively small. And that's one of the issues with macro photography is that your, your focus has to be spot on. And if you miss it, even by a tiny amount, the image doesn't really work that well. So that's something that you're gonna have to have a play with when you do this uh, yourself. So the next section is me giving you some hints on tips on how to do this. And then I'll try and do a demonstration with my phone and see if I can uh, show you something new. I'll be interested to know whether this is something <laughs> that we can do. Um, I can see Mr. Ledbury is asking, can we put Gabe on a time delay? Yes, I think we can. Or we could just ignore him and that would drive him absolutely mad. I agree, Adam. I, do you know what, uh, Miss Brennan, we need to give uh, Adam five points because I actually, I inadvertently gave Gabe an advantage there, which I obviously would never do on purpose. Um, so now we've, to, oh, let's, let's have a look at the hints and tips. When you are taking a, a, a close up with your phone, think about the following things. Try to get yourself, try to position yourself and move yourself so you're not casting a shadow over your subject. The next thing is trying not to cast a shadow over your subject with your phone, which will very easily block out the light and again, make it more difficult for your phone to focus successfully on the subject. Now, this is what we're gonna have a go at in, in a minute, is to focus as close as you can and then lock the focus and the exposure. 
So rather than the focus changing when you move backwards and forwards, it'll be fixed and you simply move the lens backwards and forwards to get it as you want it. If you can somehow use a tripod or a selfie stick or prop your camera up in some way, what I'm gonna to do today is try leaning against the table and uh, well, let's see if we can actually do this. So this is the blue Peter part. Let's go into the, uh, let's go, here's my phone and I'm gonna put this on here. Now you can see, uh, answers in the comments please as to who these are. Um, this by the way was a tree in the background before I uh, got hold of it and I managed to turn it into a, a random collection of Lego pieces. Now here you can see some characters. This one is a baddie and this one is a goodie over here. Now I'm guessing this bit you know all well and all, all ready is that if you tap on a person, you see I tapped on the golden character there and I've now brought the golden character into focus. If I move back and tap on the tree, I can bring the tree into focus. And you can see that now the character at the front is out of focus. So you know I was talking about a narrow depth of field when you photograph things close up. This is a really good example of it. So I'm now going to tap back on the head of the nearest character, except I'm also going to hold down my finger. And can you see that AEAF lock has appeared? And that's my holding down my finger. Now that means that I've locked in the exposure, so how bright or how dark the image is, and I've also locked in the focus. So if I move away, you can see that the camera doesn't actually try to focus in on anything at all, it's stuck there. So now this means that I can not worry about, I'd have to worry about the camera going in and out of focus. I can now recompose my image, and this isn't gonna be something worthy of the Tate Modern, I can assure you, but I can now recompose my image and then the next step, do you remember at the top there I said you've got auto exposure lock and auto focus lock. I can now use my thumb or any get off with that, I don't want that. I can move it up and down to actually change the brightness of the image. So let's try that again. There we go. And can you see how by moving it up and down I'm making it darker and I'm making it brighter. So just to recap, you can tap to get rid of that. So I want to focus on, let's say this time, the guy at the back here. And I'm going to hold on there and you can see that AEAF lock appears. So I've now locked focus. I can recompose. I can drag up and drag down to make my image brighter or darker. And then I can simply take the photo. So I'll be curious to know how many of you have come across that before or whether that's anything new to you at all. So that's auto focus lock and auto exposure lock. And it's something that if you're taking photographs uh, professionally, you would do all the time. You would focus in on the subject, then you'd move around to find a better angle to put things in the background that you want to have there to remove clutter from the background, or just to improve the quality of the image that you are doing. Yes, and the answer is uh, to turn it off, you just simply tap back on the screen. So tap once to, uh, to focus on what you want then just hold it with your finger and the AE, uh, AF lock appears and it stays focused uh, at that position and it stays locked in terms of that exposure, that level of brightness. Now, I think Android phones do it, Katie. What I'm not sure is how you do it on an Android phone because I don't have one. My budget didn't extend to buying a phone to figuring it out, but I've got a suspicion that it does work on Androids too, but you'll need to find out how to do that, I'm afraid. Okay, so. I'm hoping that that is something slightly new to you there um, because it was something that I wasn't aware that my phone could do until relatively recently. So have a play with that and that's what I'd like you to look at. We're going to set the challenge uh, up shortly. Ah, but we have now, we have part two. Quiz time. Quiz time. Quiz time. Quiz time. Uh, my cup says Metallica because I, I, I do like a bit of, um, a bit of heavy, heavy rock. So it's, a, it's my Metallica cup. I think I've got my deep purple t-shirt on. My musical taste is very much set in time, unfortunately, which was a long time ago. Right, quiz time. So let's get on with the next question. And I shall put this on there. Uh, and the question is this, which term is used to describe the opening in a lens that allows light to enter? And let's have your answers in the chat, please. Shutter. <laughs> Entirely wrong, did you? But you're not right either. It is 
Well, let me just say we do have a correct answer. And in fact, the, uh, let's get rid of this. the first correct answer from an adult, or the first correct answer was, of course, Mr. Ledbitter. The first correct answer from a student was Katie, who said aperture. So aperture is a hole, and that's the hole through which light goes into the camera. And you can set that. And in fact, the size of the hole is what dictates depth of field in your photograph. So uh, that's something we're going to get on with a bit later on. We're not going to focus on that today, but that's something we'll be looking at later on, is the, is the relationship between aperture and shutter speed, which is what photography is all about. So aperture was the right answer there. Uh, next question. Um, Oh, yes, well, the time delay it is working a treat, isn't it? That's absolutely true. Right, so, uh, oh, blimey, this has disappeared. Um, oh. Well, that was the question and the answer, but I'm sure you all knew it anyway. Oh, here we go. Here's the last one, I think. Uh, other than aperture and ISO, what other control do you have to change the brightness of a photo? Other than aperture and ISO, I'll cover ISO another day. Other than aperture and ISO, what other control do you have to change or to, yes, to change the uh, the brightness of your image? Have I made spelling mistakes? I went through this. I found two spelling mistakes. That's shocking, Miss Brennan. I will, uh, I will, did I, mm, contrast? <coughs> Oh, is it my spelling or the student spelling? I, if the student spelling is mistake is, is bad, I can uh, we can make fun of them for that. The light switch? No, it's not the light switch. It's not the light switch. It's not the <coughs> turning the lights on. Yes, yeah, very clever, very funny, Mister Ledford. That's not the right answer. Saturation? No, it's to do with colour. Oh, I do enjoy the wrong button. This is where I can feel quite smug. I might just press the button again. <coughs> yeah, couldn't help that. Hi oh, Gabe. I thought we'd all agreed we weren't going to let Gabe get any more uh, questions right, uh, but unfortunately he has, uh, he has, he's done that. So he's absolutely correct. It is the right answer. Shutter speed is the other way that you can control brightness in your camera other than aperture. Wonderful. So let's move on. That was the end of the quiz. Uh, if Miss Brennan, you could tally up. It, you did try. Um, we did keep him quiet for a whole question. Uh, and the question that didn't come out so that was quite good oh i've given it away casey you are the competition winner and uh for you i shall play the specially made jingle for yellow, yellow, yellow. yeah that was quite enough of that one so casey you are the competition winner the spot the difference you were the uh the absolute winner you were the one who spotted every single mistake and got the right word so well done uh, there'll be a prize winging its way towards you uh, over the course of the next few days. Good. So this brings us on to the last part today, which is the assignment. Uh, and just to be clear, Honey Who Shrunk the Kids, it's a good title, but don't ever make the mistake of watching the film because it is really, really awful uh, in, in every respect. Um, so the plan this week uh, for your assignment, and, and listen, if you just take great photos, put them on there. It doesn't matter whether they fit this assignment or not. But what I'd like you to do is to have a go at shooting small things and use some of the skills that uh, we've picked up today or hopefully you've learnt today uh, using exposure lock. Because using, ex using exposure lock takes away one thing that can go wrong is that you're moving your camera around and the camera really helpfully tries to focus for you, but it doesn't know where you want to focus. Now, by the time you've tapped on the screen, you've come too close to it. So, so locking that exposure and locking um, the focus can really help you to do it. So the challenge this week, uh, first of all, try to try to shoot small things using the, the hints and tips that I've given you. But the sort of the extra challenge is to try to turn a close up, maybe in your garden, maybe on the beach, maybe when you're out for a walk. Try and turn a close up into a into something that appears to be a much larger vista. So. Uh, Oh, shrank. What was it in the uh, honey? Was it honey? I shrank the kids. Oh, who shrunk the kids? Oh, OK, I shall go and write some lines straight after this. I, I apologize humbly. My, my my dislike for the film may have got in the way of my of my spag. So uh, I, I will have to go and uh, and tell myself off of that. I'll, I'll, I'll put myself in detention. I think it's the only way. So that's the challenge for this week, guys. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, well done for staying with us. Your pictures were brilliant yet again. I was looking at them a couple of days ago and thinking, oh, you haven't done quite so many. But then over the weekend, you got them all in there again. 
oh they were, they were wrong in the film were they that's a great relief yes and they've got this spelling mom as well which is another one of my pet hates anyway let's not let's not get into that so I will look forward to seeing you all again next week where we'll do very much the same sort of thing all over again and try and just learn another new technique and then try to bring it out in the photos that you're taking. So try and go out, try and take small things, maybe save the uh, the, the macro photography for a miserable rainy day, it's a perfect example. Or when you go outside, try and make a, a really small scene look like a gigantic scene like the Grand Canyon. So guys, have an absolutely uh, amazing week. Oh, it's inset day next Monday. That is a really, really good point. Katie, I am glad that someone is switched on here. So, no, I will be doing departmental things next Monday. Um, yes, I, I almost remembered that. So there won't be one next week. There will be one the week after. Well spotted, Katie. You're already getting a prize, so uh, you don't get a second one. But well done for spotting that. So if it's inset day next week, it won't be next week. It'll be the week after. I will keep an eye on your photos. Keep giving each other the yellow ribbons. It's great when you do that. And you've all said such nice things and given supportive ideas. Keep taking the pictures and I will see you in two weeks time. Bye bye, guys. Indeed, thanks to everyone and thank you to Mr. Ledbitter and Miss Brennan and Mr. Chalmers for being here again. Your support helps hugely and I know the students massively appreciate it. Cheerio, Miss Brennan. Uh, Thank you for all your cake judging as well. I have to ask you who's won the uh, the competition this time round. Yes, we will try and find out a way of doing this. Anyway, I shall leave you to it, guys. Bye-bye.